Greyhound Action Ireland and the Irish Council Against Blood Sports have unveiled a series of billboards throughout the country asking the public not to go greyhound racing. The billboards are the latest step in the campaign to end greyhound racing, an activity which they say is responsible for the deaths of thousands of healthy greyhounds every year. To tell us more about that, I'm joined by Nuala Dunnan of Greyhound Action Ireland. Good morning, Nuala. Good morning, Sam. Greyhound Action Ireland, who are you, what are you? Are you a sort of subdivision of the Irish Council Against Blood Sports? No, we're a totally separate organisation. We campaign purely on the greyhound racing issue. Uh, I've been campaigning for years against greyhound racing and trying to expose what the RT programme exposed earlier this year. Um, the campaign has totally exploded since the RT Primetime Investigates programme, so... Um, there are an awful lot more people involved now. But in conjunction with the Irish Council Against Blood Sports, we have started a billboard campaign, as you said, to stop, to try and persuade people not to go to a greyhound track, basically to socialise. Um, and that was unveiled. It's, it's being unveiled this week around the country at 11 locations. Mm -hmm. Now, you referred, of course, to the RT Investigates grey uh, programme Greyhounds Running for Their Lives, a documentary that revealed that around 6,000 greyhounds are killed every year in Ireland and there were other appalling practices showing and nobody would ever try to justify or con in the right mind to condone those. Your billboards display the message exploited, injured, killed, mm. don't go greyhound racing. Mm. What essentially do you object to in greyhound racing as a sport? Well, the actual racing on the track itself is, um, you know, you go to a greyhound race, you may see absolutely nothing, only six dogs racing. Or you may see dogs getting injured, and since the beginning of this year, 228 greyhounds out of a racing pool of 3,600 have been injured. That's 6% of the dogs currently racing injured since the beginning of this year in the last 10 months. You may see dogs getting killed on the track, or of which um, there were 73 killed in front of public view on the track this year. That's 2% of the current racing pool uh, killed on the track. Now, you may see that or you may not see that. I mean, I was at the Derby final uh, there a few weeks ago and, and, and I didn't see anything like that. Um, but as you said, the real abuses go on behind the scenes. Okay, let me just tell listeners first that those figures that you've just quoted, by the way, was a response to a Doyle question this month from Maureen O'Sullivan, TD. Mm. The Minister for Agriculture, Michael Creed, revealed those figures. 228 greyhounds suffered injuries, 73 killed at tracks, mm. and bringing it to a total of 1,787, the number of greyhounds injured, and 579, the number killed at tracks around Ireland in the past five years alone. Mm, yes. The fact that yes. you attended the Irish Derby, I watched it myself. Kildare Dogs were prominent in it and uh, certainly it's full of excitement, it's a wonderful spectacle on the evening. Mm. Were you there as a fan or were you there in particular <laughs> to observe what was going on? I was there as an observer, Clem, as I think you probably would might have guessed. Mm -hmm. um, I was there as an observer. If the Derby final wasn't going to be a spectacle well then, you know, I think they could definitely shut up shop and go home. Um, our experience from demonstrating outside Greyhound tracks around the country is that they are very, very poorly attended on, you know, nights when there isn't a big event happening. And I mean, the IGB's own figures show that. And I think at the Local Public Accounts Committee, the IGB admitted that attendances were down by a further 20% uh, in the wake of the um, Prime Time Investigates programme. This is on top of declining attendance figures over the last number of years since 2010. We interviewed on the programme only recently Ger Dollard, the CEO of the Irish Greyhound Board. Previous to that, we had the welfare manager on the programme. Uh, uh, all in the aftermath, of course, of uh, the appalling scenes we witnessed. But in fairness to the greyhound industry, what is your response to those who would say what was revealed in that program by RT Investigates is reflective of a minority within the industry and that the whole sport should not be tarnished with the same brush? But it's not a minority claim. I mean, this is part and parcel of greyhound racing, the overbreeding of dogs to get the dogs that you actually will be able to race. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, it's part of the model, the the, the overbreeding model, and and the previous um, uh, head CEO of of the IGB um, has admitted that publicly. And um, did, Pascal Taggart, that they, they have to overbreed dogs to get what they want. And, and he, in fact, said he had no problem with that. Yeah, how are you regarding the assurances offered by the IGB since, in particular, by CEO Ger Dollard, that they have taken a, a big range of measures since to respond to the incidents and the concerns that were raised on that programme, that the industry is uh, dealing with it, it is reconstituting, it is taking a whole raft of measures from adopting greyhounds to allocating some of its funds to the welfare of retired greyhounds and so on and so forth. So they were set up in 1958 and, and 61 years later they suddenly discovered the concept of welfare and the need to actually take, be responsible for the dogs they're breeding. I mean the 6,000 figure mentioned in the preferred results report and mentioned on the prime time investigates, that relates to dogs who are never registered on the race management system. So it doesn't actually relate to dogs taken out of greyhound racing or taken off the track every year. It doesn't and relate to dogs taken out of the, you know, the breeding um, side of things, which is circa there's about a thousand um, dogs used in breeding every year. So talking about, you know, reti- rehoming retired greyhounds, and you know, the, the Irish Retired Greyhound Trust from two t- 2008 to 2018 managed to rehome 5,000 dogs. That's that's 500 a year over 10 years, and they suddenly expect you know to believe that they're going to, to be able to deal with the thousands of dogs that they, they need to take care of every year all of a sudden because RT investigates, you know, exposed what what's going on behind the scenes. They haven't explained how they're going to deal with the overbreeding of the pups in the first place, um, and. You know, I, I was talking to somebody who works in rescue recently and they were talking about these care centres and these state-of-the-art care centres that they're talking about building and I think they've mentioned a figure of five or six around the country. If you look at a place like Dogs Trust in Dublin, which, um, you know, would be the, 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 the premier dog rescue and rehoming centre in the country, it takes €9 million Euro to run that place every year. €9 million. And the IGB are expecting us to believe that they're going to be able to set up centres like that around the country, four or five of them. It, Frankly, I don't believe them. It might not be on the same scale as the Dogs Trust in Dublin, which is a wonderful facility and does such great work. That's there is, of course, the fact that uh, in the recent budget, uh, an- another 16.8 million mm-hmm. euro was allocated to the IGB in the 2020 budget. You're saying that's a quarter of a billion euro since 2001. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Y- you, I infer from what you're talking about in your views, you'd have a serious issue with that allocation. Well, I don't think I'm the only person who has a serious issue with that. A Red Sea poll commissioned um, by us in the last month found that 66% of Irish people agreed that the government should not be handing over public money to the greyhound industry. I mean, you look around you and you, you, you see children eating their breakfast off the, the street in Dublin and you see people waiting two and three years to, to see a consultant. And, and you see this amount of money, and let's not forget now that the, the, the Horse and Greyhound Fund was set up by Charlie McCreevy in 2001 when he was Minister for um, Finance. He was a greyhound owner. Um, his colleague in the Department of Agriculture, Joe Walsh, was deeply connected to the, 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 the horse industry. And in fact, when he stopped being Minister, went on to become Head of uh, Horse Sport Ireland. Mm. So this is the old boys network at its very best and it has continued to function perfectly in the all air. And I think really now it's time that Irish people said, hold on a second here, what's happening to public money? Why is this industry, which is completely unviable, leave aside the animal cruelty issues for a second. This industry is receiving almost half of its funding from the state purse. Without it, it would be gone to the wall years ago. Um, there is no other industry in this country that would be continued to be funded by government just to keep it going when it's not viable. Is the way forward, though, to ban the industry rather than to deal with the issues that are raised that any right-thinking person would say is not acceptable? Politically, I don't think the will is there to ban greyhound racing, um, but I do think that in response to public pressure, I think there is certainly the the, um, impetus there to stop funding greyhound racing, and I think that in itself would be enough to stop greyhound racing. And not at all been flippant here, because you mentioned horse racing. Would you also be in favour of banning horse racing? 
Well, a lot of politicians in Dáil Éireann in, in a debate that went on earlier this year, and, 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 and I know Claire Daly made some incredibly good points when she talked about the public funding of horse racing. Um, most of this money is given out in prize money to mm-hmm. Arab sheiks, to, to billionaire horse owners. Uh, and again, I think it's time Irish people said, hold on a second, why is public money being given to these two activities. I mean, no if these activities are so popular and they're so self-sustaining and they're so wonderfully supported by the public, why do they need money from the public first? And you would also accept, Nuala, I'm sure, that a lot of that money goes into the thousand, tens of thousands of jobs that are in both the horse racing industry, and I don't want to digress from what we're here to talk about in particular, and likewise into the greyhound industry. It but, sustains um, I think, as jobs. Claire Daly pointed out in her contribution to the doll, very many people working at the bottom rung in the horse racing industry are on the minimum wage. So I don't think a lot of that money is going to improve the conditions for ordinary workers in the horse racing industry. And our message would be to people who are thinking of organising a social night out at a track, go somewhere else. Go somewhere else where your money isn't paying for All the right. abuse and killing of dogs. OK, Nuala Dondon of Greyhound Action Ireland on that general topic. Many thanks for joining us on Kildare today, Thank this you, morning, Nuala. And good, good morning. morning to you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.